I'm Erin O'Brien from the Division of Rhinology, and we're going to talk about an endoscopic septoplasty. We made an incision using a headlight on the anterior septum. This is a Killian type incision behind the caudal edge of the nasal septal cartilage. Once we've made our incision, we can use the endoscope to make the visualization. We want to get down to the perichondrium and elevate the perichondrium off the septal cartilage. We're using a suction freer after we had used a caudal, and the suction freer allows us to suction while we're using the endoscope under our mucosal flap. We've reached the portion of the septum where we have a spur and I usually make the incision on the side of the septum where there is a spur or a more uh, convex septal deviation. If we make the elevation above and below our spur, we can make a tunnel in our elevation and then come over the spur and we're less likely to tear it. Where the spur is located on a septal deviation is the most likely site of a rent or a tear in your mucosa. And if possible, you would like to avoid making a tear. We're elevating off the spur in this area here. And we want to have the mucosa freed up before we make our chondrotomy. And again, we're using a suction freer in this case. It's nice with the endoscope to have a suction while you're elevating so that the blood doesn't obscure your view with the endoscope. So once we have that freed, we will make our chondrotomy, and I'm using the caudal elevator to make the anterior incision in the septal cartilage. You want to be careful as you're making this incision not to push through with too much force so you don't tear the mucosa on the opposite side. You also want to make the chondrotomy behind your mucosal incision so you don't have your chondrotomy at the same location where you have your mucosal incision. Once you come through your cartilage with your chondrotomy, you can flip the caudal elevator and start to elevate the mucosa on the opposite side. If you do make a small tear in the opposite mucosa, at least the mucosal incisions won't be opposing and you're less likely to have a perforation in your septal mucosa. So we're raising the contralateral flap and once you have the opposite side freed up, then you can start to remove your septal cartilage. We're going to use a double action scissors to make our superior chondrotomy. We'll come through first the septal cartilage and you can extend this cut into the bony cartilaginous junction and into the bone of the septum. When you're doing an endoscopic septoplasty, you can tailor your chondrotomy and your osteotomies to just remove the portion of the septum that is deviated, and the endoscope allows you to better visualize just the portion of the septum that you need to remove. Next, we're going to use a Takahashi forceps to remove the deviated portion of septal cartilage and then the bony septum. When you are removing this bone and cartilage, you want to be sure you have a superior incision so that you are not fracturing this off the skull base. You can twist it after you've made a superior cut and remove it. If you have a sharp spur, you want to take care to remove this carefully so that your sharp edge of your spur doesn't tear your mucosa. Here we're freeing up more of the cartilage and then we start to see the bony cartilaginous junction right there. And again we'll use the Takahashi to remove this portion of the cartilage. And you're turning carefully to remove that. We're looking at our flap and getting a better idea of if we've removed the deviated portion. It appears I have a small rent in the mucosa and so in removing part of the bony spur I've made a small tear in my mucosal flap, but the opposite side has no tear, and so it's very unlikely that I'll get a septal perforation as long as the opposite side is intact. 
We also did a submucosal resection of the inferior turbinate on that opposite side. Once we're happy with the degree of removal of the deviated cartilage and bone of the septum and have a straight septum, we could start to close our incision. I'm using a 4 chromic with a curved needle. I start with the back portion of the septal incision and use two throws to close this with simple interrupted. I start the tie outside the nose. You can start to tie it down and then re-grab your tail closer to the nostril and then push the tail into the nose to tighten the knot. You can also close this with a running suture. I like interrupted sutures. You can do this with a headlight or with the endoscope. If you're doing it with an endoscope, sometimes it's helpful to have an assistant hold the scope for you while you are tying. Three or four knots is usually sufficient to close this. And again, you're re-grabbing your tail and pushing it into the nose to tighten your knot. Next, we're going to slide in Doyle splints. I don't always use Doyle splints, but sometimes they are helpful to keep the septum straight and the mucosal flaps approximated. We use a nylon suture through the septum to hold the Doyle splints in place. You want to be sure that the front of the Doyle splint is not pushing against the piriform or the lateral cartilages and we usually keep those in, in place for a week. So some key points to an endoscopic septoplasty. You want to make sure you're raising your flap in the proper plane. When you make your mucosal incision, you want to come through the perichondrium and elevate in the plane below the perichondrium and over the cartilage. You'll know you're in the right plane if you notice you're in a bloodless plane, so there's not a lot of bleeding, and you can feel the grittiness of the cartilage with your caudal elevator. You want to save at least a centimeter of the caudal and the dorsal anterior cartilage to have a nice strong dorsal strut. One of the benefits of an endoscopic septoplasty is you can tailor your chondrotomy to just the area of the septum which is deviated and you can visualize that with an endoscope. You can potentially just remove the spur if that's the only area of deviation. And another benefit endoscopically is that you can teach this or watch a resident do this and everyone can visualize what's happening with the endoscopic septoplasty. For cases that need reconstruction of the caudal edge of the septal cartilage, an open approach may be more helpful and as part of a septorhinoplasty, an endoscopic approach may not be appropriate.